the whole world would love to know, uh, starting with Clive, when did you first hear the voice of the young Al Jolson, and, and how did you, when did you begin to appreciate Al Jolson? And so well, I appreciated it from the moment that I first heard him sing. Right. This was on a record back in England, where I was born. I was about 14, and I heard the record playing, and I, I thought that's the most wonderful sound that I ever heard in my whole life. And of course, I was very young, but no other voice affected me the way that one did. And still today, I'm just as thrilled to hear Jolson sing as I was then, that's Mr. a few years ago. Uh, Mr. Brown, which uh, period will uh, will the uh, play encompass? What years? The, the play's gonna encompass 10 years out of 10 of the most productive years and colorful years of Al Jolson's uh, life. And it's the years in the, uh, the mid 20s to the mid 30s. And it'll take that uh, that period in his life. When he, when he uh, is at the height of his career in the stage and theater, and then when he goes to uh, Hollywood, and becomes a the first great talk talky screen idol when he made the jazz singer right and then when he comes back to the stage again his where, first where his real home is clive baldwin was one of the stars of the tony award show last year where they it was in honor of al jolson and then they showed you on the runway at the winter garden didn't they Clive? that's right i was so thrilled i i guess it was the beginning of all this somehow because years ago i had a dream that when I was about 35, I would play Jolson in blackface with the white gloves and everything on the Winter Garden stage. And I saw the red curtain behind me, and it had happened. And now this, this Jolson show that the boys have written the music for, and the, the book is also a first-rate book. It reads beautifully. Who wrote it? A beautiful uh, Eberhardt and Levy. Levy. <laughs> Levy, Eberhardt and Levy. Give everybody Levy. Uh, Leslie and David are wonderful writers. They, they just thrill me the way they put words together. Do me one favor. Show Joel the way Jolson used to whistle. Joel, Joel well, Youngblood never saw like Al. This, see, I was admiring him while ago when he was... This one goes down there like that. You put your tongue back. <laughs> easy if you, it's easy <laughs> if your name is Clive Baldwin, right? <laughs> Mr. Levine, where and when will be the world premiere of this original musical? My God, it's going to be a, a week from yesterday, on Wednesday, November 8th, at the Paper Mill Playhouse. I'd also like to say that Angelo Del Rossi, the executive producer, and Bill Gusky, it's just, uh, it's like having a great team. I mean, everybody involved has just done such a great job, and it's a, a team effort. What do you think and, uh, about uh, the popular songs of today and the songs that Levine and Brown write? And uh, what, 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 do, you, do you like it? Oh yes, I'm. Uh, I'm very impressed. Uh, you know, I tried to play guitar when I was in high school, and you know, uh, it took me about I don't know three three days, and my fingers started hurting from the frets. And uh -huh. I told my girlfriend, "Well, I can't do it. <laughs> I better stick with sports." <laughs> I would say that's just as hard as playing a sport. Playing True. Guitar. I don't think I, I think I have a lot of trouble with a curveball too. I'm a pretty good <laughs> fast, pretty good fastball hitter. I don't know if I can handle a curve. Well, I can carry a guitar. That's about it. <laughs> wife wouldn't let you handle curves anyway. <laughs> do you think you think that most songs concern themselves with the beginnings or the endings of love? Most songs are about a new love or or the end of a love. It's uh, or a lot a lot of songs anyhow, right? Well, a great a great deal of uh, your most successful songs uh, are about situations that the majority of people can have the most uh, feeling for empathy for. You know, so naturally, you know, love is really where it's at like love does make the whole thing go around make it happen and Erwin and I try to write as many songs as we can about one-on-one -on -one situations so music is really very much like religion you know it's based on love how long does it take you to compose a song good question there are different times for different songs like uh, an interesting story is with the yellow ribbon story we wrote yellow ribbon the first time and we threw it away we finished it threw it in the garbage we didn't like it now, this is something we've never did before or since. Hmm. Three weeks later, we couldn't think of an idea we were trying to write again. And we said, let's go back to that yellow ribbon idea. I love, you know, that's really great. Let's, let's try to do it again. This time we wrote it in an hour and a half, and it came out the way you heard it on the radio. I mean, do you just, like, sit down and, and, and think about the lyrics, or, I mean, think about the uh, notes and things like that, no, and try to do, put it together, no, or we do, try to... We do, we, 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 we first started to write, and uh, our first tune we wrote was on the piano, and I don't, never wrote a song on the piano before or after. <laughs> And it was knocked three times and sold God knows how many millions of records. But the funny part about it is we've used the same style since. We sit down and we have a, like a little rap session. Yeah. We talk it out. We talk about what we want to write about and we get it pretty well said. You know, what the story's going to be, how it's going to start, 
how the melody should feel and how it should wrap up and end. Right. And then we get into it. Sometimes it takes us to a, you never know how the, how the play is going to go. Right. Sometimes it takes you to another trip and you may forget the beginning we started with and end up with something else. <laughs> That's interesting. Have you tried collaborating with other people and then maybe come back to each other when uh, you yeah. tried? Really? We've done that, but we find that we're most effective when we work as a team. We just Together. We seem to have a thing to where we almost operate as one person, which is that's very it's difficult. It's fun for us to write songs. We, we laugh and scream and fight and holler and jump up and down. We, write, we finish the tune and we, if we love it, we go berserk. That's and great. this Jolson show has driven us out of our minds. Did you write four songs for the show one day? Yeah, we wrote four the first songs. four songs in the show in one day. Are we allowed to hear a song yet from the new school? We're going to play you. We're going to have five to one like song to from the show. We are allowed. It's the opening song. Wouldn't be illegal. I don't think no. so. <laughs> so this has to be, yeah, sometimes you get in trouble for doing songs you're not supposed to do. But we'll, we'll, if we get sued, so we take it. We'll one more lawsuit, the only, right? The only one that can sue you are Levine and Brown, and we're not going to sue you. We signed the paper. Right. right. <laughs> take my chance. This is a sample of what will be happening. How much can we make, me? <laughs> uh, April Milk Playhouse, the new show is called Jolson. Just a simple. For the purpose of, uh, of making it easy for the sound, I guess I ought to stay sat down, right? Sure. Very casual. Right. Well, I've I got to move around a little bit. But give me a whole lot of that. Yeah. Well, yeah. Yeah. I'll move it as best I can. By the way, even though this man's, <laughs> by the way, this man's voice, uh, Clive Baldwin's voice, is an exact duplicate of Jolson's voice, he does not impersonate Jolson. Right. He's got the same timber. Well, that's the, that's the that's hard the part for most people to remember. I'm mm. not doing a Jolson. I just happen to have this been born with a similar voice. He's doing a Clive Baldwin. That's right. That's right. But in this show, I'll be Jolson. In fact, when I, when I try to sing like Jolson, I don't say that anymore. I am the first Clive Baldwin imitator. <laughs> I love that. That's like a cowardly way of backing out of it, eh? Right. Go ahead, okay. baby. Go ahead. I'm not a politician. Can't affect the world's affairs. I hardly read the papers. I can't change what I see there. All I've got to give you is a little bit of time and if you leave your singing well ain't that the bottom line I got a song in me and i can't stop singing it's like a bell inside that won't stop ringing each time the music starts my heart starts swaying like a piano that won't stop playing touch you folks, why that's what touches me, if I can chase your troubles away I'm happy, so happy. to me the song and dance I do I got a song in me and it belongs to you I can't wait I can't wait Nothing yet. All yeah, right. See that Jolson right. is called the world's greatest entertainer, <laughs> and these are the greatest. Jolson starring Clive Baldwin, music and lyrics by Erwin Levine and L. Russell Brown, book by Leslie Eberhardt and David Levy. Joe, can I sneak a little thought in here real fast? Sure. Go ahead. Sneak one in, Larry. Let me sneak it in here. Right. That is it. We're in really good shape. Everyone has accepted the show in Jersey. The day after the uh, after the premiere, which will be the 9th, it opens on the 8th. The 9th, we have seats available, good seats. And on the, the 15th, day. 16th, and during the uh, uh, Thanksgiving turkey season, <laughs> meet all you turkeys out there and give us a hand. I'll tell you, it's amazing, the magic of Jolson. It is. We, uh, no one has seen a performance yet, yet the house is already at least half sold for six weeks. Out of a possible 48,000 tickets, I'd say at least 30,000 tickets have been sold. Wow. I think that after one or two performances, it's gone. The magic also of Levine and Brown and Baldwin and the magic of Mr. Youngblood. You, you uh, bat and throw with the same hand? Uh, oh, yes. So some don't, right? Some no, I wish I, uh, 
I wish I could bat left-handed. Uh, I think there is a small advantage to a left-handed hitter because, uh, you know, baseball is a game of percentages, and you have to go with the percentages all the time. And uh, Well, I'm going to go with you to go see the Jolson show, oh, okay? Naturally. Right? Promise? For sure. These were uh, <laughs> more exciting people as we thank a very distinguished panel. Thank you. I'll be thank right you. back. Thank you very much. Thank you. All right, that's the Joe Franklin Show, November 3rd. And that didn't come out too well sound-wise, did it? Amazing, isn't it, boy? I tell you, if you don't recall any of the right stuff, you might as well forget it. So now I'm going to put on that uh, Buick Whistle Factory stop. 